We are going through the Siddur, my dearest friends. And we're going through the daily cycle, the daily experience of how the Jew wakes up in the morning and the process of how we engage with the day. So he said, what's the first thing that we do? We say, God, you gave me back my soul. You gave me back my soul. I'm so thankful. That's right. You gave me back my soul. There's people who don't wake up. You gave me back my soul, which means I have tremendous potential today of what I can achieve. And we have to start with that appreciation. That's Aleph. You gave me back my soul, right, man? You gave me back my soul. Thank you. Then we explained that when the soul leaves the body, we said that any time that you have a, a vessel which is missing potential, that's called one major word in Hebrew. That thing becomes tame. Very good. That's called impurity. That's called contamination. That's why a dead body is the highest level of contamination, because all the potential that was there in that human being is now not there anymore. It's just the shell. And that is pure contamination. So my body, when I was sleeping, my soul went up, especially the higher levels of my soul, which we talked about. So now all that was left was the lowest animating part of my soul, my nephesh. And what was the nephesh doing? Helping my... Autonomic, thank you. On autonomic, A-U-T-O. Autonomic nervous system. Making sure that my heart is beating, that my, my blood is moving, that my neurological system is moving, that I'm breathing. You don't have to tell yourself to beat your heart. Or breathe. Even though there are people who could become mega conscious of their breathing. Even people who could be mega conscious of their heart beating. That's a lot of consciousness. Of being aware of every beat. It's a lot of consciousness. So that lowest part of me, which I could, was still in my body, when my soul comes rushing back in, the higher levels of my soul, so what happens? All the impurity is leaving because my higher part of my soul is coming in. There's potentials coming back to me. There's only one thing, is that all the impurity is leaving, but it gets stuck in one area. The area that it gets stuck in is the fingertips. The fingertips are the place, which is also the most physical contact with the world. It's the place that you make contact with this world, of how you relate to this world. That's why hands are very, very important. Hands are symbolic for the way that you relate to the world. I had a time in my life where I had a hand injury. Both my hands were locked up. Uh, it was very, a very traumatic time in my life. I was tree planting in college. It it's happens to be a great job if you want to make some of the big bucks, if you're good. That's what you're like, tell me more. <laughs> <laughs> Do tell, Rabbi. So, so spruce, and uh, I can't remember if it was 10 or 20 cents a tree. With inflation, it's probably even higher nowadays. So you get, you get paid per tree. And you would go, you'd be hired by the loggers who would cut down all the trees, which is a problem. Because when you go to replant them, they never grow the same way that they used to be. And you go to, and you're also planting only one type of tree. You're not making biodiversity in the forest. So we were paid to go and plant trees in the forest. And the way you do it is you, you go with hundreds of trees, saplings, like small ones. And there's like a whole position that you do. You take a couple steps and then this is your shovel and then you put the tree in. And you're planting hundreds and hundreds of trees. So do the math. You're planting hundreds, even thousands of trees a day. So you plant two, three thousand trees a day. If you're a real high baller, five thousand trees a day. Really? How much are you making? Yeah. That's uh, 50 bucks. No, 500. No. Off of 10 cents a tree. Now, 10 cents, so if you have 20 cents. You're making bank, right? Not bad. 
So the only thing is you gotta be, and by the way, a lot of these like hippie camps, these hippie tree planting camps, got great food. It's all like hippie style, like granola, and like almond milk, and like homemade stuff, salad, like baby greens. Some, yeah, there was like meat options, if that's what you're into. Um, but like everything's like, you know, like, you guys ever heard this cookbook, like the Moose Wood cookbook or something? It's like old school, like the original hippie cookbook. I think it's called the Moose, the Moose Wood, the Moose, something about moose. It's like printed on like, you know, like disposable, recyclable paper. So everything out of that cookbook, you would get at one of these like, tree planting. So the only thing is, is that you really got to be careful with your wrists. Your wrists are your biggest asset because when you're planting trees, you're getting banged all the time in your wrist. So my, my, wrists, my wrists locked up. It was a very traumatic time in my life. And it was very crippling, and I couldn't shake, even shake a person's hand. So everything in Kabbalah, your, everything in your body means stuff. So your hands are very symbolic of like the way that you interact with the world. That's why a handshake is so significant. So there was a, a deep feeling like I'm not able to just communicate and be in the world because my hands had this injury. So your hands are very, very significant. Your hands are, the hands is also what you do. You give things with your hands. You build things with your hands. Your hands are your spiritually, like your contact with the world. More than your feet. Your feet just take you to places to use your hands. Your hands, your feet in many ways in Kabbalah are really not even part of your body. Everything from the waist down is not really even you. It's just that which takes you to where you want to go. But there's no, there's no essential organs in the, from the waist down. No, no, I'm saying below that. There's no essential life um, necessary organs, vital organs, that's the word. Everything is from the waist up. Everything from the waist down is, it's called netzach and hoid, is the spheres that take you to where you can do what you need to do. But the you is from here up. Let's put that in your back pocket, that's a very important yusoy to think about is that you are from here up. That's why your children are called your legs. The children are called your loin. It says that, the Gemara says that the, the bar is karu da'av, that your child is called like the thigh of the father. Because the thigh is it's part of you, but it's not you. It's, it's what takes, it's what continues on for you. So your child is like literally a part of you, but he's not actually you but he's that which continues your legacy in the world. He takes your message and actually keeps walking it forwards. So this, that my hands were injured and the hand represents a contact with the world. So when your soul is coming back into your body in the morning and all of the contamination is leaving, it gets stuck right at the end of your hands. That's the last place that it goes. And because that's like your contact of how you're gonna act in this world, like you're very much me here. So what do you have to do? You have to wash off that contamination. You have to wash off that contamination with water. Water in Torah is always extremely spiritually significant. Water in all cultures is always a sign of purity. Water cleans things. Every society has water as a, as a purifier, as a cleanser. In Torah, it's extremely potent. Yeah, probably so, not. So, like, after you say the Lord, you know, usually most people, they take their hands. Oh, and I knew so someone was going to say that. Like, Mike, are you telling it's me like, that? Like, oh, rookie mistakes. mistakes. Like, oh, yeah. I so, wash my hands. So, yeah. not only that. And so I was like, yeah. And, like, you know, in his ears and whatever. I was just like, oh, I guess I have my tooth. So, that. Rookie mistake. I don't. I love you. You're great. You're great. Hashem also loves you. Not only is it important to wash it off, but the halacha shares with us that any orifices, any holes of the body, which includes the ears, which includes the eyes, the nose, the mouth, 
and the other ones as well, those are entry points that the contamination can go back into the body. So, yeah, be careful. <laughs> <laughs> this guy's like, how do you do the ultimate recontamination? Like, uh, there's a Gemara Makkas about that, by the way. The Gemara Makkas talks about, the, the Gemara was talking about what was the maximum amount of sins that a person could do at one time. So it starts going through like, the guy is like, pl he's, 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 he's plowing like a, a, a dox, a, a, an ox and a donkey, and you know, muzzled, while wearing shatnas, without a brismila, while eating pig, on Yom Kippur, uh, and he's like, and everything all at the same time. So don't do that. Don't, don't, please, please. It's not good for your eternal life. It's not even good for your life here. Torah mitzvahs give you a happy life here. Torah and mitzvahs give you a happy life here, certainly in the world to come. So how do you get rid of that contamination? So there's two parts to it. One is careful where that goes because any orifice can recontaminate. But secondly, so a person might say, fine, I'll just, I'll tie my hands. I don't even wash them, I just, I'll never touch my hands and my nose and my mouth. There's a secondary problem because just the sheer fact that it stays on a person seeps it back into the body even not through an orifice. Okay, you got that? Two parts. One, any direct into a hole of the body puts it back in. And two, even not putting it in a hole, but just the time frame, just letting it stay on the hands, makes it seep back into the body. What does this contamination do, you might ask? What does this contamination do? Like, what's the big problem? So I'll tell you an interesting thing. So the halacha explains that a person's not careful to wash his hands in the morning. So it says if he's a Torah scholar, he'll forget his Torah. If he's a Torah scholar, he forgets his Torah. And this is Paskin, this is, this is uh, the law in the Shulchan Aruch. And if he's not a Torah scholar, he's a regular person, it says he's yoitzmi daito, he goes crazy. I translate that nowadays as anxiety. I think there's a lot of anxiety in the world, a tremendous, more than there's ever been. Just a nervousness. And the contamination that we're talking about, I'm not, there's nothing to do with medical advice, I'm just giving Torah advice. The contamination that we're talking about is always put in reference to things that like bother a person, especially in the Kabbalah, it talks about these as like negative forces that kind of like mess with a person. So that kind of like, I'm never settled. I'm always like, it's, even, it's funny, people talk like, I'm bugging out. I'm bugging out. I'm bugging out, Rabbi. I'm bugging out. I'm like, Don't bug out, bro. It's okay. It's like these bugs. It's like, I'm bugging. It's like little bugs, little creatures, little speed. You're not bugging out. There's no, you know, there's no crickets on you right now. I'm bugging. I'm bugging. I'm bugging out. No, you're not bugging, but I'm, I'm, I'm bugging. Spirit, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, bug I'm bugging out. Like, what's going on? Yeah, I'm scratching. And like, I'm, yeah. I'm, I, what? So that bugging out, that kind of bugging, is that there's some spiritual bugs, we're going to call it, some level of contamination that is, has not been removed from the person. So he becomes less settled. I've been talking to my wife a lot about the, the, the concept called shalva, tranquility. That there's one level of a person to have peace. I don't fight with you, you don't fight with me. But I'm not at peace. I might have peace, but I'm not at peace. My wife is telling me that she calls that, she really thinks that that's called shalva. Shalva means I'm a deep, is, she said peace is like a, is a, is an intellectual state of I see that there's peace here, everything is fine. I don't bother you, you don't bother me. But shalva is an emotional state. I feel at peace. So that feeling at peace certainly is helped through washing your hands in the morning because you're taking off that contamination. And therefore, how long do you think you should go before you take off that contamination? 
Oh, someone sounds very religious in the house. So says the Sfarim that ideally, even before your feet go on the floor. So don't, don't, don't be so crazy. I'm just going to run to Meir Sharm now, buy a washing cup and things. Okay? But r really, it should be as quick as possible. Because why would I want to leave that contamination on me any longer than I need to? Which means, even if I don't go out to Meir Sharm and buy myself a little bowl, you know, with the cup. Have you guys seen that before? You know what I'm talking about? Like the bowl and the cup thing? Usually when you see a guy bring that into the dorm and you're like, he flipped up. <laughs> this guy's obviously a religious you know, fanatic. He's washing his hands by his bed. I don't even know what he's up to, but he's a religious fanatic. He's crazy. He's washing a little hand thing by the bed. Crazy. But after we understand what we understand now, does it sound so crazy? It doesn't sound so crazy. It sounds actually sensible. Sensible for the person who doesn't want to become crazy to wash his hands. You feel that? Yeah. So washing your hands. Even if you don't go and buy a, a little hand washing cup and basin, Try to run as quick as you can, obviously safely, to the sink to wash. If you wear socks, do you, is that like... So that is an extra bonus that's brought down. Zusha talks about it, other tzaddikim. That it's, it's more of a Kabbalistic thing that before you even make contact with the earth, terra firma, because that's like you're already setting the impurity deeper into you. It's like you've already moved on into the day. So people, what they'll do is they'll like go cross-legged on their bed, you know, like this style, and then the washing basin's right there, and then they just wash their hands right like this. Okay, and then, feet on the floor. Now, says the Satna Rebbe and other big tzaddikim, what is the first action a, dude, a, Jew, a Jew does in the morning after he washes his hands? So before that even, he takes that water. He takes that water. Is that water good water? Would you want to sponge your floors with that water? What about feed it to your animals? No way. The house. That water has to be disposed of. That water is considered toxic water. That water has absolute spiritual contamination on it. Down the sink is good? Down the sink. Make sure, though, there's no dishes in the sink. Because otherwise, those dishes also need to have negavasar done to them. Yeah. Also, don't do negavasar into, like, a sink that has your toothbrush in it. Just like, oh, it's just, like, in the sink. And, like... I just did neg so you need to do negavas on your toothbrush. You might even want to get a new toothbrush at that point. Yeah. So you want to dispose of that water, because that water has spiritual contamination. It's brought down in the base Yosef that, I want to hear a spooky thing? Yeah. yeah. That there were idol worshippers. I know, it's crazy, right? Wow. <laughs> yeah. It's crazy. <laughs> <laughs> That's the thing we Idol. Realize. Boom, exactly. And that's the, the bite out of the apple. The tree, tree of life. It's a das toivara. Be careful of the tree of taking a bite of the tree. It really is the apple with a bite in it. That's right. Joke that's right. They're, they're, telling, they're just telling you what it is. <laughs> <laughs> hey, this is the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. So be careful with it. So there were idol worshippers that, this is brought down in halacha that they would try to acquire that water and then do stuff with it. Because it's like, it's like bad vibes in there. It's like demonic vibes. So if anybody ever comes to you and like offers to like buy it from you, just run. <laughs> get that. Get, no, don't, don't play any games. That, that immediate, the first thing you do is that goes and gets nullified, goes down the sink and gets nullified. When it goes back to a huge body of water, it becomes nullified. Back into the ground becomes nullified. Don't put it anywhere that people are going to walk. That stuff is very, very potent. And that's why the first thing that we do in the morning, we're not only doing, saying everything we talked about Modeani, of gratefulness and acknowledgement of God, the truth of existence, and my soul that I'm alive. Just the acknowledgement of life the thankfulness of life. The second thing that we're doing is we're washing away the impurity. But then we're doing a physical act, the shtei yadayim, and we're throwing this down the sink. We're saying we're disposing of, of an evil contamination energy from the world. Something which is evil, which is not good, has to, be, has to be removed. That's why if somebody is kind, if somebody lets a murderer 
God forbid, out of jail. They're too lenient on them. Are they being kind to that person? Yeah. Are they being kind to society? No. So even to that person, it might not be the right thing. But they're certainly being cruel to the entire world. Somebody is a, somebody is a, a horrible alcoholic. And the person's like, give me the drink! And you say no to him. Are you being mean to him? No. You're being, you, being a great friend. You're actually saving the guy's life. You, if you give to him, if you aid and obeyed his drinking, you're doing an act of evil. So being able to say no to evil is kindness. You get what I'm saying? So here to be able to take that, the, the quality of contamination, and the first thing we do is have a spiritual consciousness that, that I want to reject something which is evil, shows that you really believe in goodness. So Bezrat Hashem, that's how we start the day. It's very, very leading of everything that's to come. And Bezrat Hashem, we're going to continue to go with the Siddur and the daily daily Seder, it's called, of how we wake up. We should be Zaycha Mamish to live the way of the Torah every single day of our life. Amen. 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 Have a wonderful week, my dear friends. Uh, Kol Tov. I can't go down to the toilet. To you can, you can put it down the toilet also. What, what about uh, for plants? Is it good for plants? No, not good for plants. It could be grounded. Grounding now applies it. Gr- so, yeah, grounding does, but it has to be like a large grounding. Don't give your plant your contaminated well, he's, he's saying good. If, you, if, you, if it's grounded properly, then that's oh, one thing. Like, in the gra- okay. like one a single house plant, I wouldn't just like keep feeding it then. Yeah, well, because like, I mean, <laughs> like being on an animal sure is not good, but trees like it. So, I don't know, maybe they could I'd avoid, I'd avoid the horrors. That's what I'm saying, yeah, exactly. Right, right, right. That's, That's what I'm saying. I know we're, I know we're talking about spiritual contamination, but when I think of washing my hands in the morning, I can't help but think that we're talking about you know, protecting from disease or physical so, the, so well, there's one level that for sure, you wake up, your hands might, well, there's one level your hands might have touched things when you sleep. They touched areas that were, let's say, uh, uh, sweaty or dirty. And uh, that's why really you should be very careful when you sleep, not to put your hands below your waist. You should keep your hands above your waist. Because the hands have a way of moving places. So you keep your hands above your waist. Well, we're also going to talk the way you sleep. You sleep on your side, right? We mentioned? Left side first. Left side first. In the middle of the night, you switch to your right side. So there is a rational element of just washing your hands from if they touch sweaty areas or, or they, maybe they went inside of a person's, you know, whatever. <laughs> And that's just dirty. So wash your hands in the morning, right? Yeah. But we were taught from our Torah that there's much more going on than just physical contamination. There's much more than meets the eye. I don't even think about that. Most people don't even think about it. Like this stuff you're saying, I've never heard it, but like it makes sense. I just never thought about it. (laughs) Welcome to learning Torah, right? <laughs> Welcome to learning Torah, my friends. I want to ask you a question. What is more rational, spirituality or physicality? Physicality. Well, it's more. It's more physical. It's more. You can see. Wait. What's more real? What's more rational and real? Well, I'd say spiritual because, like, spiritual is much more rational. Why? Because where does physicality come from? Yeah. If you follow the logic. Physicality is not very logical because something had to create it and it can't say it was just physicality because when did that start? It had to be something totally outside of physicality which we're going to call infiniteness which is very spiritual. That is more rational. So now the fact is a physical world, physicality becomes irrational. It's undeniable, I see it. And therefore, the more that you lean your brain into real, pure logic, you realize that spirituality is very logical. It's more real. And therefore, yes, we are living in a very physical world, but spiritual concepts are very, they're more real. Your soul is very real. Your soul is much more real than things that are physical. We just, we live in a physical world. We seem to relate to physicality. And the more that a person's like, you know, bamboo man, you know, I see food, I see this, right, I right. eat. Monkey so that's right. So 
he's stuck in a kind of physical framework. Yeah. When you open up the higher parts of logic, you start seeing more sublime reality. And you realize it's more real. And after this physical body goes into the ground, the real you is going to live on for a very long time. The real you should be filled with a lot of tire. Bezrat Hashem. Kaltuv! Kaltuv!